Welcome back to Warp Curry. I'm Gary Patel. Is this me? I'm Yogi. And uh, on today's episode, we're going to be talking about spouse Asians and why we have trouble finding a spouse. Um, but before we get to that, I want to thank everybody that subscribed to us. Uh, we're on our way to hitting a goal of a thousand subscribers, which is a goal that we didn't think was going to happen this quickly, but we're on our way there and we thank everybody that has helped with that and is following us on this journey of ours. Um, last week, we had sent a teaser that said we were going to have a special guest on here. Her name was Charmy Patel. Um, but after we released that teaser, it turns out uh, we could only have one pretty face on this podcast. And so we had to boot her off the show. Maybe she'll come back later. We'll see. But on to the main topic today, why South Asians have trouble with uh, finding a spouse. Hello and namaste. I'm mother of a versatile boy and are looking for a versatile girl for marriage purpose. She should be versatile in kitchen and should be able to make Thai. She can do part-time work from home. But if she want to go to office, she should be home before her husband to give him warm welcome. She should sure, not baby. have any bad habit like smoking or drinking. She should avoid holding hands in public because our son is very much shy. She should dress decently at home all times, even when alone with our son. If you are okay, we are okay. <laughs> Mail us at pandes2012 at the rate.com. Thank you. This is awesome. Yeah, there's tons of these videos, and uh, I know we made a joke of it, but uh, uh, whoever came up with this is brilliant. It's uh, comedy videos um, that I thought would be funny to have <laughs> as part of our topic. Are those actual, like, comedy? Like, did people put this together to be funny? Or is this, like, real people who they just saying, like, look at what this is and making it? It took me a long time to figure out, and I'll be honest, I don't really know. So maybe hopefully by the end of this, we can figure that out. It looks, there's the videos are too crazy to be real. You know what I mean? Like, this was just one of them, but there's like some of these videos are really like, if some whatever they're saying, kind of like what this lady was, which is, you know, that's the mother of the son. I don't know who in their right mind would allow their mother to speak on their behalf to find a woman, right? Or a wife. Um, and there's many of these, so whether or not it's real or not, we'll, uh, we'll try to find out by the end of this, but, uh, uh, yeah, the topic again, like I said, is why do South Asians have trouble finding a spouse? So, um, um before you start, you pick this topic. Why did you pick this topic? <laughs> <laughs> do you have any concerns? Do I? No, er everything's fine with me, but, uh, I do have some concerns. So. Um, on a regular basis, and I'm sure you get this too because of uh, uh, what the number of people that we know and uh, how we kind of interact with a lot of our friends, uh, we get this question all the time as to trying to help find somebody uh, for one of our friends or for a relative or a relative's relative. Um, and so a couple of weeks ago, I was thinking about it. I was like, well, why is it so difficult for um, our culture to find somebody? And so based on that, started researching, um, found a lot of interesting information. Um, main thing, and what started happening is I started finding all this information, which we're gonna talk about, um, but then it brought a question to my mind is that where did this concept of marriage even come from, right? You know, we've kind of through generations have just been doing it, but when I do even other topics that we've done before, I try to find out the origin of why something happens. And so I did look into it um, a little bit here and uh, found an article which says the history of marriage. Um, it says marriage has been an essential part of human society for thousands of years. The earliest recorded marriage dates back to ancient Mesopotamia around 2350 BC. Now, you can search a similar thing and you're going to find a whole different answer. This is just one that I found, um, but the answers were very vast. And, and it depends on the culture, I'm sure as well, right? Because 
I'm sure in the Western world or certain in Greek mythology or in Hinduism or Sanatana Dharma, it's like hundreds of thousands of years, you know? So it really depends on what culture you're talking about. But anyhow, go on. Sorry to cut you off. No, no. So you're right. So part of it is there's this religious aspect of it, marriage. Um, and so they try to like, because again, on Google, a lot of it has to do with the Bible saying, you know, uh, the joining of a man and a woman. Um, now, that doesn't necessarily say that's marriage. Right now, marriage is, you know, you have a legal document behind it. Whereas back then, there was no legal doc document. Um, then there was times where marriage had to do with one family becoming a part of another family as part of a contract to kind of elevate the two families to another level, um, which we've seen in kind of like uh, historical times of, uh, you know, the uh, uh, the Vanderbilts and then who would marry into that family and it or, you know, in England, the uh, uh, the kings and queens, when they get married, it used to be a transaction almost. Um, and even in India, at times, we know where uh, money was back in the day exchanged. Um, and if you weren't part of a rich family, there's a good chance you didn't marry somebody from a rich family because it was all a part of a transaction. Um, and so that's there's no exact answer because everybody has their belief, part of their culture as to when it started. Um, so I don't exactly have an origin that says this is the day some guy on this you know or woman came up with this idea. Um, and some people say God came up with this idea, but you know um, that is also varying as to how people understand it. Um, but the other part is uh, which you kind of uh, brought up or you talked about, which is you know why. So that's all great, the history and everything. And uh, as you said, there's different cultures that have different beliefs and all that stuff. It is what it is, right? But nonetheless, we are in the world today. And there's a bunch of people who are looking. And as you mentioned earlier, they're always asking like, hey, do you know someone, this and that and everything? Um, and we kind of do our best. We're like, yeah, one of my friends is looking or you know, he or she is, is interested and you guys seem like you might be a good match. So... But why is it so hard? I, I don't remember it being this hard when we were young in our 20s or 30s kind of looking. Um, so I, I really don't get what the root of the issue is, although I do have some theories um, or observations I've made. But it, it's just it definitely does suck because I know a lot of people want to get married. They just can't. So you had found this, which is, uh, you know, why aren't you married? This is a a stat that you looked up uh, out of all the research we did, if you want to talk about so, that. This is pretty interesting. Yeah, so it's obviously broken down by age group, all right? And basically, um, not ready to settle down or you're too young. Obviously, I think the age group for marriage has been escalated over time. And I think historically, that is the case, right? Everyone used to get married much younger all over the world, not just in, in certain cultures. And I think that age has just been push, pushed back progressively. So the fact that people are saying, hey, I just want to get married later. Okay, not not a big deal, right? Not financially prepared. That was interesting. So I guess some people want to say that, hey, I'm, I don't have enough money. Or maybe that person doesn't have enough money. We want to give it time. Um, so I thought that was interesting. And I thought majority would be in this last category as to, we haven't found what we're looking for, right? Obviously, it's broken down by different age groups. So the darker color is the younger group. Um, and then the lighter green is the um, the oldest group. And then that in-between green is the is the mid-age group, um, 25 to 34. But I, I would have assumed it was the last category when I saw this. I mean, it's really interesting. Like the, the first part, not ready to settle down or too young. Um, and as we think about it, like you and I are obviously married um to women but the eight like when i got married around 27 i thought i was late right the issue with waiting later which has become a norm not just in indian society but in america everywhere that it's okay to wait to get married much later into your 30s um but the only thing i see with that is then eventually obviously you're gonna have kids and then to have kids at the age of 30 35 even up to 40, which now is okay at times. But then, you know, the whole, and you know better than I do because I don't have kids, but you have kids. 
the running around that has to be done, the time that has to be spent behind them. I think as you get older, that becomes harder. What, what I what I tell kids, anyone who I've talked to them about marriage, they're like, hey, if you know someone or maybe they're not even ready. Right. And I'm like, hey, do you actually want to get married? Because there's some people who don't. And I'm like, oh, good. Right. They're like, oh, no, no, no. I want to get married. All right. Do you plan on having kids? And they're like, yeah, I, I definitely want kids. Like I want I for sure want kids when I, you know, am married, et cetera, et cetera. I was like, all right, great. You're 30 right now. And you're saying, oh, I'll be ready to get married around 35, right? Or 32, let's say, for example, right? The girl's not just going to fall from the sky when you're ready to get married. Like, you got to start looking now. And I think that's what these kids don't get is they, they're like, oh, no, I'm not ready to get married yet. I want to wait till I'm 35 or whatever. If you're 34, you really need to start looking because it's not going to, you don't start looking at 35 yeah. because you really need to make sure it's the right person, et cetera, et cetera. Then the other thing is, then you need to factor in, you're not just going to get married and have kids. You're going to you want to hang out for a bit, a couple of years or more, five years or whatever. And then you're going to have kids. And my point to them is that think about your life at the tail end, right? Do you want to be like into your 60s, still putting them through school and college and, yeah. um, and all that stuff? Or do you want to have a life as well after, right? So you got to put all this timing into perspective. And when you do the math backwards... They need to start looking much sooner because I think they assume that the girl is literally or the guy is going to fall from the sky or whatever yeah. they want to marry these days. Who the hell knows? To me, around 24, 25 is when you got to at least start and then hope for the best to to find something within somebody within one to two to three years of at least even talking to them. Um, now, now here's another question. What is the perfect match? Or, or what? Like, OK, I'm looking when I'm 24, but this. No one really that's knocking my socks off. Then what? So that's a hard question um, because um, it, it's everybody has their ideal person that they see in their head, right? When we were young, we also had a vision of who we wanted to marry. Um, we, I don't know about you, but uh, luckily I was able to find exactly who I thought I was going to marry from the age of one. As, as did I. I found exactly what I wanted. <laughs> um, and because of them, we're able to do this podcast, so we thank them every day. But, um, you know, it, it's, it, it, again, this is from conversations from other people. The longer you wait, the lower your standards are going to become. I, right. I disagree. The longer you wait, the more picky you become. So, but then okay, eventually. Just take, just take a human, right? When we were 20, or forget it, when me and you were 15, we didn't care where we slept, what <laughs> careful. we did. Like, we, we could sleep on the sidewalk and be like, yeah, whatever. I guess we got to do what we got to do. And it was fine. We would we had <laughs> no idea where we were going to end up, you know, especially when we started getting cars. We just did whatever. We were flexible, right? Now, you and I are going on vacation. It's like we're planning. We're like, all right, where are we going to stay? Is there a hotel available? Did I get my stuff? So... Yeah, we're older, we're more mature, so we can plan. But I also think that we are more set in our ways, which means you're not going to be as flexible, yeah. which means I, I want to make sure. And as you learn more, as you get older, you learn more about the world. And now you're saying, oh, yeah, I, I do want someone like that. And you keep adding these qualifications as you get older. No, so I agree with that, which is you become more picky, but because you're getting older, your option becomes less. Options become less. So. True. You, you have left eventually off, you had, I bet uh, you whoever whoever had an intention to get married at a young age and by young whatever whatever your age was and if you didn't end up getting married at that age and let's say you ended up getting married 10 years later I hope you're not just settling and saying yes to get married and I guess I should be careful when I say that because well then maybe they'll never get married right so I, I don't know it, it's a weird uh, I, I hate can, to classify folks who are older and get married by saying you got se you settled because I, I hope they didn't um, and they found what they wanted. But you got to you got to have compromise. And I don't think you're able to compromise. The older you get, the less you're able to compromise. I can I'm sure I can think of somebody that potentially has compromised because of the situation of age, place, time, you know, visa. I mean, people compromise for visas all the time. Right. We know that. Um, yeah. where if they don't have a choice and they get into this uh, situation, but 
again, that's not what we're talking about. But compromise is. I don't think that's a bad idea. You could have found the same person ten years ago, and at that time, you're like, this person's a hundred percent match, and they probably are. You know, a quote unquote hundred percent match. It's just that ten years later, you're more picky, and now you're like, well, she doesn't have this and this, or he doesn't have this, this and this, and now I'm going to settle, right? Yeah, you're not settling. You found the right person. I think you're just more picky. So you think that you're getting something, you know, and obviously everyone wants to marry up because everyone thinks they're awesome and most people aren't. Yeah. Except my wife. So there's another stat that I'm going to throw up that uh, we found. Uh, just going to put this up there. It, it's funny <laughs> in a way and it's it, it's interesting. So uh, the funny part is that there are 37% of the population that is married is still looking for love in the U.S. Now, I don't know if that's what they meant by it, but that's the first thing I saw and uh, uh, was that laughing. Nuts. But, um, but you can see in here that uh, in single and unmarried is 40%. Divorced and widows is 13%. Um, and in a relationship is 9%. So I'm assuming based on in a relationship is 9% and looking for love, then the 37% <laughs> means wow. the same thing. Um, so just an interesting fact that I saw. But... Uh, it's uh, in the U.S. It, it, it's hard, but at times it feels like it's easy. Like we talk, we've <laughs> we've talked about this before. When we were young, it was a lot harder to try to find somebody. Whereas nowadays, if you look at it, there's hundreds of apps, there's hundreds of websites, right? Like that video we played is a joke website, but there's actually Tons and tons of websites. I can't remember one website that we, you and I could have joined when we were looking, you know, not that we had to actively look, but when we were at that age of, you know, potentially looking for somebody and had, you know, in terms of India, Shadi.com. I mean, there's 60, 70 websites in America, probably alone. And then you have websites in India. Um, it's a lot easier right now. Like we talked about this before, where if we were single right now, don't go there. <laughs> if we were single right now, we would go back and find our wives. Don't the same ones that we married now. <laughs> um, we would have found uh, them sooner. We would have found them sooner. <laughs> um, but it, it, it's harder at the same time because I think with something like an app, you're seeing too much at one time. And we have friends that are on Tinder and they're swiping left and right all day every few minutes or every other day. Whereas back in our time, we had to meet somebody, go out with them, you know, spend some days, weeks before you can make a decision. Whereas now it's instant and you have so many options in front of you. The interpersonal skills are definitely gone. Like it is just, I, I see so many kids who are just... <clears throat> They're a 10 out of 10 online when they're texting someone. But in reality, they just fall flat on their face. And I don't mean from this from a dating aspect. I just mean in general. Like you can talk to people. You can email back and forth with them, text them. Um, and I've run into this situation where if I'm like interviewing folks for a job, someone refers me and they're like, oh, this person's great. We text back and forth. And I'm like, oh, this is good. Let's meet up for lunch. And I can talk to them. And it's, it's like it feels like a whole different person. And I think that has to do with the impact of social media. And yeah. that probably impacts this. No, I think that's a huge thing. And I, and again, I think we see that impact more because of us seeing it on social media and whatnot. The only good thing I can say is that the South Asian community overall is using this a lot less uh, than the rest of the world. Like, right, quickly, I can show you uh, this stat. You stop laughing at that. Um, Can you read pen- the editing for us, please? User penetration rate for online dating services worldwide as of 2023. India is pretty much towards the bottom, um, where at least to me, our culture, our generation is still trying to use, hopefully, the normal routes. That's what I'm hoping for, um, is that they're not using just social media Tinder and all those things to try to find um, a spouse and hopefully, unfortunately, in the, the wrong methods. Um, this is one last stat I wanted to show, which is um, the first marriage 
the rate of divorce is 50%. Now, the crazier part is that the second marriage, the rates go higher. Is this, so, is this in America or like in the world? This is the world. Um, Holy crap. Now, that's the world population, so it's 50%. Now, when you go through each state and every, I mean, each uh, country, um, it's different where, you know, the good news is obviously India has the lowest rate of divorce. So in that sense, I feel like, you know, because the rate of divorce is so low, hopefully we're uh, better at trying to find uh, the right spouse. Um, who with, had the highest, who had the highest rate? It's America, United States. Hmm. United States is the highest. Um, there was a time where China and a couple other places during COVID might have been a little bit higher. Um, you know, COVID did not help with marriage and staying together, obviously, because when you're at work eight hours a day, you're away from your spouse. But now during COVID, everybody was sitting at home 24 hours a day. Um, and, you know, you can imagine, again, it, it's I didn't have to lift that. So I was lucky enough. I was in New Jersey. My wife was in Maryland. I, and thought, for, I mean, not to say this in a, not to be offensive. I mean, COVID was terrible, right? A lot of people died. But for us, for those of us who didn't have a, well, that was pretty cool. Do that again. That what the hell? This, oh, way, this way I don't have to promote it. Oh, that's pretty sick. So can't promote the bottle. <laughs> so for our family, and we were lucky that no one got sick and everything. So in that sense, our family was home all the time. It was actually a really good time genuinely like our entire family uh my sister and brother-in-law's family would come over and we would all of us my parents and everyone every day we'd all just be hanging out and it was like a year for us just being together or how it, long the lockdown was and I, I think these stats kind of prove that which is south asians and the process of how they find a spouse which for the most part is very different than I think the rest of the world. Obviously, somebody that's born in America and raised in America, even though they're from India, may be more accustomed to the methods of what people do in America. But the ones that kind of went through the process of uh, what we used to do. So for my example, when I was in D.C. at the age of uh, around 25 or something, I'd seen my wife somewhere and I asked somebody about her. And so they talked to her. They talked to her family. They talked, her and her family. And then eventually, you know, we went out. We spent probably a few months going to different places and stuff. Um, and then eventually the families came together. And as a whole, we decided on getting married, right? And so we dated, but we also followed part of tradition and i think that's why you know even during things like covid our society or our culture was able to stick together longer than you know and i'm saying this based on stats not any kind of like bias but based on the stats other cultures had a tougher time so i wonder if um within the other cultures and i don't the survey probably doesn't exist but do marriages where each respective family also gets along in addition to the husband and wife or whoever, you know, um, in addition to them, if they get along, does the marriage actually last longer compared to a husband and wife who get along perfectly, but the families hate each other? And is there a higher divorce rate in those situations? I'm sure it's a lot easier to stay together. You know, I'm sure the stats are out there, but to me, just logic is if both sides of the family enjoy each other, then it's easier for everybody to be happy together, right? I think it, and the biggest area where I think it would help is conflict management because yeah. fights are going to happen. It happens all the time. If I, I've met some couples who are just like, oh yeah, my wife and I never fight. It's like BS. You have to. It's just, <laughs> you know, and, and again, when I say fight, there's obviously different levels, but I'm sure there's disagreements or arguments. Some like I, I have a hot head, so I get pissed off, right? Um, maybe if I was the type of guy who doesn't get pissed off, there's still a conflict, right? Yeah. And I think if you have good families that support you each other, when the conflicts get to a point where it's you're not able to manage that individually between you, your husband, or you and your wife, 
then I think that's where the families can step in and help with the conflict management, assuming the families get along, right? Yeah. Because if you think about it, if the families don't get along and I go and tell my mom or dad that like, oh, she's so annoying. She does X, Y, Z. Instead of them working on my understanding and helping me see the other side of things, they're going to be like, yeah, we've been telling you this the whole time. She's nuts. Right. Yeah, and yeah. then naturally the families grow farther apart. And I see that in even in our culture for the few situations where I do know people broke up. The families just didn't want anything to do with each other either. So maybe that's a maybe that is a, the key stat. And it yeah. just happens to be that in Indian culture, the families typically get along much better and and all that before marriage. I mean, I think before that even happens, before the families happen, and, uh, you know, we got to start winding this down. Uh, but you can explain what your thought process here was. So um, I think you have to see the good and the bad, right? So when I fought, saw this, I love this guy. He's the best. Um, but he's 100% right. You should first make them use a computer with slow internet and see who they really are, right? I think it's really important to see people at their best and their worst before you decide to make the next step, right? Um, and you need to introspect and figure out what is your best and what is your worst. And are you able to compromise? If you all compromise at the same level, I think you'll be fine. Just jump in. There's no such thing as a perfect match. There's no such thing as, you know, the right person. I think it's whoever you can just get along with the most and you end up getting used to each other. And that's what fosters the love at the end of it. You know, it's nothing, uh, nothing else less superficial on the top when you initially meet. Yep. Um, that's my doctor that's cool advice. <laughs> I think that's a good place to end it. And uh, anybody else that wants uh, free advice can uh, always contact us, and uh, <laughs> and we'll 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 happily give you. That's a so lot of waiting to happen. We're soliciting <laughs> counseling for two unqualified individuals. But are we? No, I think we're very unqualified for this. I've barely uh, stayed with my wife in the last ten six years, so. Um, yeah. or maybe I'm the best person to get advice from. You never know. All right. So we're <laughs> done here. And like I said, we thank everybody that's been, uh, joining us and, uh, I'm hoping this topic, uh, has been something that everyone gets something out of. And, uh, we're hoping to do more like this. Uh, we've been listening to everybody that's been telling us and giving us some advice. Uh, not too many criticisms, but most, I think almost everything was useful advice. Um, and we're going to try and take all of that uh, to heart and try to do as much as we can to make this better. Um, so make sure you like and subscribe.